guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the art of leaving your customer alone. Now, this may seem basic or rudimentary, and you may be saying to yourself, well, Ant, of course I'm not going to leave my customer unattended, but you're going to have to. Throughout the sales process, you're going to have to leave them multiple times to do a number of different things. May it be bring a deal to finance, may it be bring the car back to get detailed or gassed up, or may it be doing other you know parts of the process that each store has. So you're going to have to leave them. That's inevitable. But the devil's actually in the details throughout the process when you do this and, and you could determine whether or not the customer's actually moving the ball downfield and adding value to the process and being productive and helping you accomplish some of those steps, kind of filling that that dead time between the handshake, congratulations, and going to the FNI office to sign. You can control whether it's being productive or if you don't handle it properly, the customer can start to unwind the deal and that obviously would be catastrophic. So we don't want that. I have some notes here I'm gonna dive in for you guys and just go over some of the things that can happen when you leave the customer unattended. Also some tips as to make sure that bad things don't happen during this time frame. So I'm gonna dive in right now. First and foremost, you wanna make sure that your breaks, your, your time away from your customer is limited to a certain number. I think five to 10 minutes is perfect. I don't think it's too, too long, but I also don't feel like you're coming back every two minutes checking on them where it gets a little annoying. So I think five to 10 minutes is perfect. There's actually been studies that were done years ago um, when they did studies on sitcom television shows and they found that every 11 minutes, their audience would need a commercial break. That was like the sweet spot to where the audience loses their attention, right? Like they start, they start to get jittery and, and fidgety. So every 11 minutes, they would break up the sitcom with a commercial break. And then something interesting happens during that break. After a commercial or two, the audience starts to get excited again, like reinvigorated about the show and they can't wait for it to start again. So it's almost like saving the audience from themselves. You have to save the customer from themselves. So five to 10 minute break, is the max. I think that's a perfect time. And I'm going to explain and teach you guys exactly what to do when leaving the customer. So the one thing that I always do, and I learned this at a younger age in the business, and I think it's amazing. I always want to do these three things, right? These three things. I want to tell my customer what I'm about to go do, how long it's going to take. And when I come back, I remind them what I did. So if Let's say the customer is Brian, and I have to bring their vehicle back to the detail department. I would say, Brian, I'm going to go bring your vehicle back to the detail department right now. As soon as it's done, we're going to do a complete thorough inspection of the vehicle, make sure it's perfect for you. I'll be back in about 10 minutes. Can I get you anything while you wait? A cup of coffee or a bottle of water? I always offer a beverage, right? There's a little bit of a, a reciprocity built in that if you offer them something and then you leave them, it almost makes them feel a little guilty to start to maybe do some of the things that could ultimately unwind the deal. And we all know what they are. We're going to dive into them. But Brian, I'm going to bring your vehicle back to the detail department, right? I'm telling them, I'm telling Brian what I'm about to go do. It's going to take me about five to 10 minutes and then I'll be back. How long it's going to take. When I come back, I remind him, hey, Brian, just brought your vehicle back to the detail department. Soon as that's done, we're going to do a thorough inspection of the vehicle right now. I'm going to go bring your insurance binder that was just emailed to me to the finance department to make sure we have all of your updated insurance information. I'll be back in about five minutes. Can I get you anything while you wait? And I just restart the process. I restart the clock. I reset the clock. And in Brian's mind, the perception of the wait period, which is important because Brian's probably going to answer a question about the wait period on your survey. Every dealer is saying, you know, we're sending out surveys now and it's super important. It's plays a big part in a lot of dealerships comp plans specifically to the store, but even trickles down to you as a sales rep, they're going to, they're going to think back, wait, how was the wait period? And perception is reality. If you restart that clock every five, 10 minutes that they can't really piece together how long the wait was because they constantly were restarted and refreshed. So it's very important to limit the length of time between you leaving your customer. Another horrible thing that can happen for you as a sales rep is if you close your customer at payment and then they start pulling out the calculator while you're not there and they start doing, okay, so I'm paying $850 per month times 60 months for, oh wait, I thought the car was $35,000. So that could happen. I'm not saying we're being manipulative, but we are worthy and deserving of profit, right? If they're leaving with a vehicle that satisfies all of their family needs and, and they're happy with it, they agree to the terms, we 
We deserve a profit, right? That's just reality. Of that. We're in the profit game. We're in the business of profit. So if they start adding these things up and you close them at payment, they can very easily come out of ether. So that's an obvious one, but it does happen. And we want to you know, limit the, the possibility of that. So that can happen. They can also start to shop you. They can go online and start browsing. I, I, I remember 10 years ago when I was on the sales floor, I remember a customer waiting in these red leather chairs we had in front of the F&I office, literally shopping my price and with other deal, like literally chatting with other dealers as I'm waiting to get them into the office. Like I, I saw them doing it. I watched them doing it. And um, I, didn't, I didn't want to put any more attention or focus on it and maybe open Pandora's box. I was waiting for it to unravel so then ultimately I can reclose them, but I don't want to be the one to unravel it. And it actually, you know, it, luckily it worked out, but that does happen, right? They can start to shop online if you leave them unattended. So that can happen. They can do the math and they can start shopping. So you want to make sure you don't allow that to happen. During this time period, I like to give them an assignment. I like to give them something to do, the customer, that will help move the ball downfield. So there's a, there's a sheet in my customer deal packet for my salespeople that prints out and it lists three referrals, three referrals for a family and friends program that your customer can fill out right there on the spot. And what I do is I leave the sheet on the desk. And as I'm walking away, I'll say, Brian, I'm going to leave this right here for you. This is our family and friends program. So any buying customer that you send to me, I'll send a check in the mail as a token of my appreciation. I listed three spots right here. If you could just write down three people in your life that are in most need of a new vehicle, when I circle back, we'll go over them. Thanks so much. Could I get you anything while you wait? Cup of coffee, bottle of water. And I'm, I'm walking away as I'm saying this. And it, it's giving them an assignment. And as I come back around, they're going to feel like they have to have something for me. Like they have to have something filled out. Now, they may not have three. They may have one or two. And the conversation is probably going to be like, Anthony, I couldn't think of three. I got one for you here. One's better than nothing. But I give them an assignment. During that time period, maybe you can get them to post a review on Google or Dealer Radar for you. Um, or if you're already taking a picture outside of them in front of the vehicle, maybe they can post it on their social media pages and tag you. Put them to work. You've earned the right. You've earned the right. It's, I've always felt like salespeople, particularly in, in car sales, they, they don't kind of wring the rag for all the deal is worth. They don't get all the juice out of the orange, right? There's more to squeeze out. It's not just about moving a unit and making commission. There's so much more that comes out of it that could be a force multiplier down the line, such as referral business, such as reviews. And so there's so many things you could do to fill this time slot. And based on whatever your store's processes are and, and procedures, you can kind of insert these things during this dead time. Now, don't give the customer or don't accomplish, maybe if, if you have 10 things to do between the handshake and between going into the F&I office, don't do five of them in a five minute period and then let the customer sit for 40 minutes. Break it up every 10 minutes, kind of another task, check off another box, check off another box, right? So every 10 minutes, do something else. So they constantly feel like they're busy and active and they're constantly moving towards the end of the process. They feel you know, the, the progression of it. it. It's almost like it's analogous to me personally. I'd rather drive an hour and 20 minutes, but be moving the entire time, see different scenery, than spend an hour in bumper to bumper traffic, not knowing when it's going to end and not feeling myself actually moving forward. So it's analogous to that. Keep them moving, keep them, keep the traffic flowing and keep them occupied with different things to do. I think the most important thing during this time period when you leave your customer alone is obviously what we talked about earlier, tell them what you're going to go do, tell them how long it's going to take, and then remind them what you did when you come back to them. That's the, the fundamental of every single time you leave them, what you should be doing. That's the foundation. That's, that's where we're operating from. But most importantly, it's just being efficient and it's, it's acting efficient. Don't ever let them see you stumble around. Uh, um, don't let them see you do that, right? Be smart, work smart, be sharp, be focused, and make sure you always look like a professional when you're in front of them and you're always efficient. And that stands for the entire sales process. But your store will have a sales process. If it doesn't, I can help make them for them. Um, I can make the process for them. But follow the process. Make sure you follow the steps. Time it out. 
practice it. Practice with you know other people in your store and see how long it actually takes for you to do these things so you know if the average wait time to get an F&I in your store is an hour and a half or two hours, whatever that time may be, some longer, some shorter, you know, okay, this takes me 10 minutes, this takes me 20 minutes, this takes me 15 minutes. If I separate every task, every 10 minutes, I give them something else to do. An hour will you know, accomplish five things. We have 10 in our sales process. So map it out, practice it, dress rehearsal, but be efficient, communicate with your customer. Communicate, communicate, communicate. That's super important. Always make sure they know exactly what you're doing and when they're gonna see you again. And, and, and when you come back, remind them what you did because listen, there's a lot of emotion involved. There's a lot of stress involved. They're, they're only hearing about 20% of what you're saying anyway. So make sure you communicate clearly and often. Don't ever take for granted that they know exactly what's going on. Come from a place of, hey, we do this every day. Obviously, we know exactly what we're doing. They don't do this every day. Don't, don't take that for granted. Make sure you're always clear and you communicate with them and everything will work out fine for you. Hey, my friend, thank you for watching. And if you want to see videos just like this one, please like and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate the love and support. And don't forget, leave some comments down below. I'm looking forward to all of your interaction and feedback. And I can't wait to bring you more videos just like this one. Thanks again. I'll talk to you soon.